Hi, my name is Harleen Stevens. I am a tax manager at Nizabachia LLP, and thank you for joining me today when I will discuss some factors that increase the likelihood of an IRS audit. First of all, it's very important that you report all the income that you receive on your 1099 form. This is because the IRS matches 1099 forms, and if they see a discrepancy, they will question it, send you a notice, and that is possibly a reason that you will be subject to an audit. The IRS looks at deductions for items such as medical, taxes, mortgage interest, and charitable contributions. So in other words, if you have low income and you report high real estate taxes or mortgage interest, that could be a trigger for an IRS audit. In addition, you want to make sure that you keep very good records for non-cash contributions. The IRS will look for inconsistencies in the above items. Also, if you have alimony, if you get it, or if you pay it, the IRS is going to match that between both parties where the alimony is concerned. If you have rental property, it is important to know that you cannot claim a rental loss unless you meet the very strict rules of being a real estate professional. For those of you that have a business and report business expenses on your tax return, it's important that you keep very good, accurate records of your business expenses, especially for items such as travel, entertainment, and auto. And I suggest to my clients that they keep a log or even a little memo book with them in their car to record the business usage of their auto expenses. Home offices are another item that the IRS does look at very carefully. So for those of you that claim expenses with regard to a home office, you should make sure that that home office is used exclusively for your business. If you have business losses, they can be deducted, but this is another item that the IRS will scrutinize. So for those of you that have business losses, again, make sure you have documentation so that you can substantiate those losses. One item that is very big now with the IRS is those people who have foreign bank account income. If you have an account in a country other than the United States, there are very large penalties for re failure to report your foreign bank account income. And as a matter of fact, not only do you have to report the foreign bank account income, you also need to report the actual amount of money that you have in these foreign bank accounts. This is a very important item, which I don't have time to get into at this podcast now, but I very strongly suggest, if this relates to you, to speak to your tax advisor or attorney. If you have a business and you are required to issue 1099s for those individuals paid over $600 for services rendered, it is important that you issue those 1099s prior to the due dates of January 31st. For those of you that have sales tax returns that need to be filed, the IRS and the states that you report in will match up the receipts reported on your sales tax returns to the receipts reported on your income tax returns. So you want to be sure that those numbers match. If you are unsure with regard to sales tax collections, that is a, another big item for an audit mostly from the states that you live in. So if you do sell merchandise or provide services, I highly suggest, again, that you speak to your tax advisor to see if you are required to collect sales tax. If you were audited once, there's a much greater likelihood, unfortunately, that you will be audited again. Also, your likelihood of being audited increases substantially if you make more money. So if you're making over a million dollars a year, then your risk of audit is about 11%. However, if your income is $200,000 or less, your risk of an audit is about 1%. And lastly, sometimes you can do everything right, but you would still be selected for an IRS random audit. I hope this podcast was helpful to you. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 973-328-1825. Thank you very much.